I once got the question if it's necessary to do weight training for your wrist action. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> it's not important, at least I'm not doing it. Um, but that, because of that, I came up with an idea. Because lately I've been getting so many messages from you guys about my videos, so much cool feedback, but also so many cool new ideas for videos. And I looked through some of these questions and one question seemed to be really important for a lot of players. And the question was, Jasmine, can you once talk about how to hold the cue right and talk about wrist action? Let's answer some of these questions. Uh, this microphone microphone is bugging me Jesus microphone keeps bugging me oh, this microphone and I got this one just because of you guys by the way because whenever I started recording new videos I got the feedback Jasmine your videos are great but your sound is <laughs> so I'm like okay thanks for that so I went online bought myself the new microphone and now it's bugging me but I hope the sound is good for you guys how to hold, ow, <laughs> uh, this is not my day, um, <sighs> take 100, how to hold the cue, right, um, let me give you a different picture, imagine you are holding a baby bird in your hands, you don't want to squish it, you don't want to hurt it, but you also don't want the bird to fall down or fly away. So this is how hard or soft you hold the cue. Because what you don't want is, like you surround the cue with your full hand, not just with your fingertips or three fingers, with your whole hand. So now what you don't want, you don't want to hold the cue too tight because as soon as you, as soon as you hold it too tight, you tense your muscles and you don't want that tension because that will uh, be in the way of a loose stroke, of a loose cue action. And the next is not just how soft or hard you hold the cue, is also what to do with the wrist. And I want to give you another example. Imagine you're holding like a, a bag from uh, the supermarket or a fashion store. So whenever you hold the bag and you're walking home, this is the normal uh, direction of your wrist. I don't think you would ever walk home with a bag and hold it like this or like that because this would be totally uncomfortable for <laughs> after a little while, right? So think about the bag when you walk home from the supermarket or store or whatever. And this is basically the same how you hold the cue. So you want you want your wrist to be completely straight here. So whenever you check your hand and your wrist and you're not quite sure if you're doing it right, then look at your muscles. Look if, it's, if, if you're tense here, you know, because as soon as you hold the cue too tight or you snap and flick your wrist, you have to activate the muscles here. And then you create some extra tension in your arm, in your hand, in your wrist. I know, I know what you're probably thinking right now. What about Shane? Shane Van Boning and his hand and wrist. If this is my hand and how I hold the cue, then this is his. So his hand is, is like a bit forward. So he does flick the wrist a little bit. Um, <laughs> when you look at sports, no matter if it's billiards or tennis, golf, whatever, and you look at top players, you will always see unique techniques and skills that are out of the ordinary, that are not textbook. Same with me, my follow through, my elbow drop, it's not textbook. Um, and I would never teach it to a kid or beginner. I would never tell them, listen, do it the way I do it. Because I know it's something that makes my technique and my style of play special, unique, and it works for me. And the same with Shane, his wrist action, the way he hold, uh, holds the cue, that works for him and it might not work for you. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm saying you have to find, of course, your own style, but it's always good to start with textbook and to kind of know, okay, this is like the normal, natural version, and then you can go from there and then create your own style. <laughs> 
So the no-go is when it comes to your wrist. Um, I think it's pretty clear as soon as you snap and flick the wrist in any kind of direction. So as soon as it looks like this or like that, this way, or even like this, <laughs> or that, mm, any more ideas? Or like, you know, if you hold it just like this, you know, use your thumb, that's important. So there are pros and cons when it comes to wrist action. The cons are when you play with wrist action, you need to tense your muscles, of course, because you have to snap and flick the wrist. And I just told you before that this might influence a smooth, relaxed cueing action. So you just have to be aware of that. Um, also, if you snap and flick the wrist too early, too late, you might get offline, your hitting point on the cue ball might change, so it might influence your accuracy and precision. Um, and it can also tamper with your speed control because the wrist is a powerful joint and can create a lot of extra speed. And now this is the point where I'm telling you the cons. Um, I actually meant pros, <laughs> not cons. <laughs> so there are specific shots where wrist action is good in my point of view and is helping you. But there are certain type of shots where wrist action can really help. And I'm going to show you the shots right now. In this case, the object ball and the cue ball are so close together that you can't really cue and stroke normal. In this case, a little wrist action can help you play this shot. Of course, you don't have to play it like that, but try it out and see if it works for you. One of the toughest shots in pool is the drag shot. And I like to play this one with a little bit of wrist action. But in this case, you have to understand that it's not always extreme wrist action. Sometimes you just need to open your hand a little bit and then close it in order to get the desired amount. Another important shot where wrist action can definitely help is the break shot. In this case, you can create some extra speed with your wrist action. And that is definitely something that you need when it comes to breaking hard. When it comes to jumping, you need to be able to create a lot of speed and power in a very short movement because you cannot stroke normally. In this case, wrist action is golden. And if you have watched my video on YouTube about jumping, you will see the movement, the wrist action with jumping is important. When it comes to the basic shots, follow, stop and draw, wrist action can give you that extra little touch and a little bit of more quality when you play it right. As you already know, the wrist action can create extra speed. So in this case, I want to play a more extreme draw shot and I can also not follow through as I'm used to. So in this case, more wrist action gives me the speed that I need in order to play these shots. So try it out, practice, practice, practice. All right, <laughs> it's a wrap. Uh, I'm done with this video. I'm gonna have some coffee now because I'm tired. Um, just one more thing I want to mention, don't forget stance is really important overall. Every little detail is important. Today we talked about a little detail here, but you can have the greatest wrist action and hold the cue completely right, but you're doing something else wrong and then you might not get the end result that you want. So this today was just a little detail, everything else matters too. Just like with this coffee, you can have the greatest coffee in the world. If the machine is crap, you might not get a good coffee <laughs> in the end. So with that said, I'm done for today. I'm so tired. I'm sorry. Um, I already put coffee in and I tried another one. It's a wrap, people, and I talk to you soon.